Hi everybody, it's Clinton Kane. I just did an interview at the Zach Sang show. We talked about Zach Sang's dog's butthole. Um, and we also talked about music and 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 all the traumas. All the traumas. Let's do this. Hello, beautiful human. My name is Zach. That is Dan. Hi. And we welcome to the studio for the first time ever. I'm very excited. Clinton Kane is here. Woo. Woo. Hello. Thank you for having me. Hello, hello, hello. You made the pilgrimage from Las Vegas. Yes. Yeah, you fascinate me beyond. I've listened to your music mm-hmm. more in the last, I don't know, maybe like three months, four months, than I've listened to any other artist. Oh, wow. Yeah, your stories that you're telling are Absolutely magical. It's all trauma, bro. Honestly, that's what I'm picking up. <laughs> Laugh about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Quite sad. I actually cry at night in my couch, but I make jokes in the day. Well, w- <laughs> there's a lot here to unpack because it does sound like, at least the recent stuff. Yeah. You're talking to one person. Yeah. And you use a lot of th- those types of words. You, mm-hmm. I. It sounds like. Th- these songs are ripped from your reality. Is that accurate? Yeah. Every single song I've ever written is from a personal experience. Is that because you don't know what else to write or because you feel like you need to do this to continue to exist? Because songwriting entered your space after an anxiety attack. Yeah. Um, it's because I don't see a point in writing if it's not something that feels real to me. I, 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 don't, know how to, I don't know how to express words... I don't know how to express words into songwriting and in my own songs if I don't feel it. Like I, I, I've tried writing like songs that like are like outside of my own personal life and it just hasn't like hit the same way and I can't sing it the same way because mm-hmm. it's not something that's personally happened to me. So Martin Garrix, Drown. Yeah. Great song. Uh, tell me lies, tell me painted truths. That lyric just sticks out to me. Do you write that or do you get lyrics already done? Because uh, he heard you on YouTube. He actually heard me on Instagram. What? Yeah, he found like a he found like a original song that I wrote. He liked it, followed me, and then connected with my A&R and everything. Um, tell me lies, tell me painted truths. I, yes, I wrote those two lines, yeah. When you're working with Martin, he's, does he come to you and say, this is a piece of production, you need to now write to it? Or how did that work in specific? Um, so that song was like a cut that was given to me, like kind of... It was like a chorus and a first verse and that's about it. And then I basically changed everything and, and I changed like the verse and then I changed like a little bit of the chorus and everything and then wrote the whole thing in like a day and then sent it over to Martin. And he was like, oh, this is like great. And it just came out like that. So is that the only song that you have out that's partially yours, partially somebody yeah, else's? Yeah, that's the only one, yeah. <clears throat> when you real like you write your first song after you have an anxiety attack... What is that? Like, do you, one, have that song still anywhere? Do you record it? Or is it just written on paper? This is what anxiety feels? That that anxiety type yeah, song? Well, yeah, you, but you, I wrote an art, I read an article about you that yeah. said that you started writing only after you had an anxiety attack. <clears throat> your yeah. first one, right? Yeah, that was about 2018 September. It's out on Spotify. We recorded and everything, um, yeah. that whole, like, segment. But, yeah, that's, I mean, before that, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to song for I like tried songwriting. I did music before and I was singing and I, you know, knew how to sing a little bit and it only happened after that. Okay. So when, it, when, when that incident <laughs> happened, how long after that incident did you go and write that song and why was that one easier to write? The anxiety song? Yeah. I'm not quite sure. I like, the thing is I was doing YouTube covers before that and then, you know, got a lot, started getting a lot of comments saying like, oh, you, we want to hear your own songs. So I didn't know how to write I didn't know how to write so bad that I told my brother, can you write me a song and then I'll post it on YouTube myself and say that I wrote it. I actually, I, it's, it's actually called lukewarm. It's not out on YouTube anymore, but I didn't write it because that's how bad I didn't know how to. And then I came back from like living in Greece for about a year and then I had anxiety attack and for some reason I picked up the guitar, started humming melodies. This, the words just started coming out and I was like, oh, f- this, what just happened? What you wrote about was it, what, fueled your anxiety attack i was having an anxiety attack in the moment while writing it yeah and as soon as i finished writing the song the anxiety attack left and then i was like wow this is the only thing i want to be doing in my life what what do you release in that song that needed to 
be released from your your zone because like there's a reason why you felt better afterwards, right? Yeah, I don't know. I I, I think it was maybe admitting the fact that I've I had an anxiety attack and being able to like understand like with the words that I put on that feeling that that was it. I I don't I don't know. I don't know why that happened or like how that was so real. But it just like after I wrote that song, it was just gone, and I was like very confused. I was very, I was actually very confused. I was like, wait, what is going on? And that was my first ever panic attack. So that's uh, the fact that they're, they're in sync like that. Yeah. Is wild. Do you feel like you need a panic attack the next time to write a song again? No, 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 no. Before, back then when I was writing and everything, I needed like some sort of different emotion. Like I wrote, um, this is what being cheated on feels like after like being in an Uber and listening to the song that me and my girlfriend who cheated on me. And started crying in the Uber and then wrote the song and after that I stopped crying and whatever. But now I'm I'm getting better with just like sitting down and writing and everything. Is the second song you write harder than the first one? Because the anxiety attack brought the first one on, but the second one, like, I'd be nervous because... second one was easier. Really? Because yeah. you knew you could do it? Yeah. It just like came very natural to me. You're fascinating because there is such a reality here. So I, I want to dive into you, you. You brought it up. Yeah. Uh, this is what it feels like, mm -hmm. which that's the, the title to all the songs. But this is what it feels like to insert blank there. Yeah. Uh, one of them, the records from that EP that came out in like 2019. Yep. Uh, this is what a rough childhood feels like. Yeah. Where? What is your story? You start in Australia, you make your way to U the UK, and then how do you get here? I grew up moving around a lot. Um, my mom was a pastor, and she was also a businesswoman and everything, so we, we moved around like every three years around Australia, the UK, um, cities in Asia, just like every four couple of years we kept moving back. That's why my accent's kind of like, that's why it's very confusing. <laughs> Everyone's like, what are you? I don't understand. You look this, but you sound like this. Like, I don't understand what's going on with you. Every time, every single time. <laughs> Um, but we, you know, I sang a lot in church. I was like, I was worship leading in front of stage and all that stuff and doing covers and, you know, learn I could sing. And, um, I, I, I don't know. I never, I never, there was never a point in my mind where I was like, I want to be a singer songwriter. I want to play on stage. Never. Not even once until I wrote that anxiety song. I was doing pre-med. Yeah, you're ready to I was doing pre-med and I was, I was ready to be a cardiologist, make a ton of money. But, you know, I've settled for less now, and we'll see what happens in the future. <laughs> um, disappointment to everyone. Um, but It's wild. <laughs> it's crazy, yeah. But it starts with your voice, because yeah. you know you have the ability to sing, right? Not everybody has that as a baseline gift. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you even opened your, your, your mouth and realized you had something? Yeah. I didn't realize I had something. I just, I, I, I knew I was, I knew I had... I knew I was on pitch. That's all I thought about it. Until this day, like, till this day, I'm like, I can sing. I don't think I'm great, but I think I'm okay. Where were you when you... I was, a ch I was in... Church? Yeah, I was in church. My, the first time I sang, I was worship leading. And who's the first person who told you that you were good at it? Um, My mom. She, she was like, oh, you can sing. And then, like, a couple of weeks later, I auditioned for, like, the church competition for singing and everything and i won like first place and i was like oh this is cool like There's something here yeah so your mom's a pastor you're a big part of the church community yeah how do you get to america like like how the fuck do you get to <laughs> vegas <laughs> um i took like a little like soul searching trip to greece and i was there for about a year leaving pre and i dropped out and then i ended up just booking a one-way flight to greece staying there and lots of things happened you know a couple jobs all this stuff. Um, and then I came back home to Australia and sat in my room and um, had the anxiety attack, started writing. And as soon as I released the anxiety song, I woke up the next day and it was like 300,000 views. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I wrote another one that day. This is what toxic relationship feels like. I woke up and it was a million. And I was like, oh, that's kind of sick. And then I just kept kind of doing it for about like three weeks or a month. And then, you know, the emails started getting on and everyone was like, oh, we love you and blah, blah, blah. This, we want to fly you out to L.A., blah, blah, blah. Then I ended up flying like the next two weeks. <laughs> okay. And then, and then I ended up in America. 
So it really starts with this one song. There's this a lot. Is, yeah, there's there's definitely a lot to like where I'm at and where I'm going for sure. It's crazy. There's a lot to talk about. It's amazing. Yeah. It, because it is, it's cool that like you were writing those songs in real time. Yeah. Like you wrote one, you put it out there, you saw a response. Yeah. You wrote another one, you put it out there, you saw a response, you tried again. Yeah. Um, But you drop out of pre-med before you choose to to write before you have the anxiety attack but really m maybe the pre-med thing helped fuel the anxiety attack um, you had to have been nervous to leave because you leave medical school to go on a soul searching mission mission a trip for yourself your mission was to find yourself correct yeah and i didn't end up finding myself so what'd you find nothing just a lot of money nothing. spent just all day <laughs> this not yet yeah, she just spent so much money in greece that's that I think that was kind of what it was because I came back home and I realized wow what am I doing with my life like actually what am I doing like I just spent a year in a foreign country after you dropped out of medical school yeah that took a lot of time exactly. and money and resources exactly. to get into and I had no plan b I had no like I was just like I don't want to do this this doesn't make me happy I'm gonna go and if something happens something happens if it doesn't it doesn't and something happened I don't like having like plan b's and like you know what I mean? I like to have, even though I didn't really know what I was going to do, I just left and tried to figure myself out. And then that happened. Does singing make you happy? Yes. Did you know that singing made you happy while you were in school? I don't, I don't really know if it makes me happy. Hmm. Songwriting makes me happy. So I, I, I like singing, for sure. But with songwriting, there's a different, like, ex there's a different, like, release of emotion than just singing. But I did like singing. Just trying to figure it all out. Can I ask a So how'd you end yeah. up in Vegas, though? Because usually people come to American <laughs> Entertainment, they go to New York or L.A., and you're in Vegas. I was, so I signed a deal 2019. I ended up being in L.A. for nine months. And then I left because my visa ran out. I had to leave. <laughs> so I went back home and then ended up going to Amsterdam in after four months of coming back home and then we had drown happen and i was in amsterdam for about a year for uh, amsterdam for about like eight months and then my visa ran out in the u in, in the in the eu See, it's yeah it, it's else. like ac actually like talking about it gives me ptsd <laughs> it was like so <laughs> stressful like all these visa running out and i it ran out so and covid was happening and everything and i couldn't get in the u.s i didn't have my o1 yet and i didn't want to go back to australia because then i would be stuck there so I was like, I should go somewhere kind of near to Europe and near to the U.S. where I can still vacate. So Vegas? So I, I went to Istanbul. Okay. I was in Istanbul for two months. I couldn't get in the U.S. yet. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I, was, I was in Istanbul for two months. I went to Cyprus for, for North Cyprus for three weeks, came back to Istanbul, and then I got my O1 finally, ended up going to L.A. I was in L.A. for two months in Venice, and I just like, I, I, I like LA, the weather and everything, but like I couldn't focus because I was like easily tempted by everything that was happening all around. So I, I couldn't like focus on like what I had to do, make TikToks every day. That's all I basically do at this point. Um, but um, yeah, I ended up just like, because my management's like, they're all based in Vegas, most of them. Um, and he was like, why don't you try out Vegas? So we went there and it worked out well because I'm, I'm like in a 20 minutes away from the strip. This is a quiet neighborhood, like with families and everything where I could just sit down. Everything's quiet, mostly depressed most of the time, but it helps because I'm like alone and like in my head and in my zone where I can think like more creatively and like better ideas for certain things. So that's how I ended up in Vegas. Wow. Just out of a want for quietness, stillness and yeah, isolation. Yeah. Also much cheaper, saving a lot of money. Yeah, without a doubt. Oh, I have like a two bedroom that's like 1,800 square feet that I pay for $2,000. I mean, that's crazy. Two thousand. Like, I'd pay like 5000 over here. Easily. I'm good. I just, oh. I just can't be asked. Hey, beautiful human, I'm hitting pause real quick to talk about something very important. We were actually just talking about it with Clinton Kane, mental health. I started going to therapy a few months ago, and it changed my life for the better. If you feel like you need to talk to somebody, do not be ashamed. Reach out because somebody is ready and willing to help. If you are feeling depressed or struggling with uncertainty, or having difficulty sleeping, BetterHelp offers experienced therapists who can listen and help. 
BetterHelp is going to assess your needs really easily. They're going to match you with your own licensed professional therapist, and y'all can start communicating in under 48 hours. BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not a self-help thing. It is professional counseling done securely online. There's also a broad range of expertise available, which may not be available locally for you. So BetterHelp is here giving you the resources to help yourself. Also, there's a broad range of expertise available on BetterHelp that may not be available locally. Also, also, you can log into your account whenever you want and securely and safely message your therapist. And you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. And uh, you can always schedule like a weekly phone conversation or video conversation with them too. And yeah, BetterHelp is committed to fostering great therapeutic matches. So they make switching a counselor or changing out a counselor really easy and totally free if needed. I'm telling you, BetterHelp is an amazing option and an incredible service that is more affordable than traditional counseling, by the way. And financial aid is available, so why not try it out? BetterHelp. Uh, it changed my life for the better, and maybe it could do the same for you. The Zach Sang Show is so proudly sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. And our listeners, you, can get 10% off your first month of online therapy just by going to BetterHelp.com. Slash Zach Sang. That is better, H E L P dot com slash Zach Sang. Get matched with a better help therapist and get started. I'm interested because, like, do you have to live a bunch of life up to that moment of isolation to then write about it? Right? Because you're going to Vegas to craft an album. That's what you've been doing. I've been tracking it. There's, you've teased a bunch of songs. Your one in a million is one of them, right? Yeah. Will that end up on the new album? Uh, Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Do you like that? Is that your favorite? Is that why you point that <laughs> Clearly out? Clearly, somebody's still working on their album. No. No. I, I mean, I think it's a great song. I, you have a you have a lot of really great songs, though. Truly. So I, it's not f- for me to pick what ends up on your album. What's, what would you want, though? Um, I mean, I would. I I, I think you'd definitely be there. It depends on what story you're telling overall, right? Which is what I want to get into. Is like, do you live a bunch of life before you move to Vegas to work on this album, and then you just kind of store it all and then reflect on it? Yeah, basically. I feel like I've gone. I feel like I've gone through like a lot of trauma in my childhood and like growing up and everything enough to just be isolated and be able to like think about those things. Also, you know, all the other other like everyday problems we all have. Um, so but. when you're sitting down and crafting this album. Are you telling stories of today, recent? Or are you trying to go back? Like, what do you set a it's, timeline? It, it, it's all different. It's like today I feel something. Last week I feel something. Four months ago something happened. Like all these like random moments in my head that I write about. Do you store anything? Do you have ideas like captured somewhere? Yeah. Phone notes. What do you do? Notes. Yeah. You're talking about almost one person <laughs> in a majority of the songs that you've re- released over the last couple months. Like, e- even going back to Chicken <clears throat> Tendies is a little bit older, but like. Are you talking about the same person from Chicken Tendies to Guess I'm in Love to I Don't Want to Watch the World End with nah, Someone Else? they're all different. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a hopeless romantic, so I love getting into relationships, but then I under- I realize that I'm not good with a commitment. Uh, commitment. So then it ends up being just... So then it's just like... It's kind of perfect if I'm being honest. <laughs> it's kind of perfect that I'm... Because it's like I get into a relationship, it doesn't work out, because of this, this, and that, and then I get heartbroken, and then I write about it, and it's like a constant, like, it's perfect for my job. I'm having a fun time. <laughs> but you're leaving in your in your wake a bunch of exes, I would assume, or, or, or scorn lovers. Yeah. Do they know when a song is made about them? Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you just allow them to figure it out on their own, or do you share it? There have been, like, a couple times where I've written, like, Fix It to Break It. I wrote that while I was in the relationship with the girl. Oh, wow. And, like, she knew I wrote that about her. So it's kind of, it's like, it kind of, like, kind of like depends. Did she talk to you about it? Yeah, she got mad. She got a little, like, angry. She was like, why do you feel this way? I'm like, I just do. <laughs> How do you talk? Is that where the conversation ends? Yeah, or do you talk it out after that? No, we kept talking about it. And then at some point she was just like, okay, I'm sorry. I understand. Let's work through it. But then I have the song already, so what am I supposed like? I'm, yeah, yes, I will release it. Like, you know what I mean? But also move on. You, you, yeah. You, do you want her in your life after you have the song? That specific girl? Yeah. No, yeah. I ended up like breaking up with her. Got it. 
but she inspired a good song, so maybe you keep <clears throat> her around, get some more inspiration. Bad idea. But no, it's more about like like you. I think it's your turnover rate needs to be high, so you can have new inspiration. Yeah. But I'm okay. Disclaimer: I'm not getting into a relationship with a girl just to write songs. Okay, <laughs> I actually fall in love. I actually fall in love, mm. and then you know, just the normal like. How do you define love? How do I define love? That's a deep question. Like, yeah, you're gonna sit here and say I all, I actually fall in love with all these girls uh, that I end up leaving behind and milking for music. <laughs> It's really calling me out, man. I just met you, dude. <laughs> We've been DMing for uh, oh, you know, for a, a few half weeks. The amount. Yeah, 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 yeah. We talked about that one thing with the with the, with the uh, your dog. Oh, my dog's and, anal. Yeah, the vet. Yeah. yeah, that's what caught your attention. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. was like, for sure, I'm coming. <laughs> for sure, <laughs> his dog's butt bleeds. I gotta be on that show. <laughs> um, how do I define love? It's like I think I know, but then maybe I don't. Like I could say, like, when you look at a person and. Everything else in this world doesn't matter. Everything else, every negative and bad thing goes away. You mean I could say that, but here's like, it's like. Is that accurate every time? I don't know. Probably not. I have a lot of work to do with my emotional well, stability. Looking back on your relationships, <laughs> do you think you've actually been in love? Once. Once. Yeah. Is that what the song I Guess I'm In Love was written about? Yes. Is that person still in your life? No, we uh, broke up the day after the song release. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> really? Did the song have anything to do with that? Did the song have anything I mean, to do with that? No, just... no, it's not about the song. It's just like our natural progression of our relationship. It, it just like didn't work out. Okay, so you just recently broke up. Yeah, the day after the song came out. And the song just came out. <laughs> yeah, the song like th four, three weeks ago? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you already onto somebody else? No. Do you, so what are you writing about now? Milking the old relationship? Yeah. Just mining for things? Yeah. There's a lot of things. We wrote, like, I wrote, like, four songs about that last relationship, and then just everything else that's happened in my own life. How long were they in your life? That. That last relationship? Um, not nah, eight months. Who broke up with who? Mutual. When did you realize you were in love with them? Oh, wait, not mutual. She broke up with me. Sorry. Got it. Yeah. Did you say I love you first? Yes. Did she say it back? Yes. No, when she dumped him. I actually, I actually <laughs> said it. We were, we, I actually, <laughs> we met like, <laughs> everyone's, everyone's going to think of a f emotional mess. We met in New York and f we were at some sort of party and four days, like we were at like, I think it was like our third day meeting, like our third day, like we've known each other for like two weeks at that point. <laughs> third day meeting, get like really drunk New Year's Eve and it's like 3 a.m. and I'm like completely like gone. And I say I love you in like two weeks of knowing each other, and she's like I love you too. And then we woke up this, and then the next morning saying, "Huh, <laughs> I don't know." Okay, <laughs> but <laughs> but it ended up happening like after a month. Like we, you know, we talked about it. And like I said it first, and then she did. I uh, guess I'm in love. I guess I'm in love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I feel like I don't know how somebody would take that. Like oh, I guess I'm in love with you. <laughs> like no, no. <sighs> It's more so that title was like in my head because um, it was crafted from like because I've never really you didn't know. felt true love. Yeah. So at that point, I was like, oh, sh I, I guess I'm in love. You know what I mean? Kind of like nonchalant, but also like, oh, wow, that's cool. <laughs> so I guess kind of rude, but you know. It's you. Say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just I'm surprised that she ended up breaking up with you. Did yeah. she know the song was coming out? Yeah. She was with me in Vegas. Yeah. So she celebrated the release of the song, and yeah. then the next day was like, yeah, you know what? I don't think so. Yeah. So that that must have happened. <laughs> it on... just didn't work out. It's interesting, though, because I, I can like... look up the date. You must have broken up on August 21st. Yes, that's exactly. <laughs> literally 9 a.m. August 21st. Wow. Did she text you, or was it in person? We were in person, oh, and wow. she had a flight at 11. <laughs> so she we, Did it we right broke up. We, no, yeah, we broke up, and then she had to fly, and it was just like... <laughs> I don't even know how I'm still marketing this song, if I'm being honest. It, like, hurts every time I post a f***ing TikTok about it. But I, we're pushing through. <laughs> I mean, it's... I, I, one could say it's your most successful song to date. Yeah. It's no, killing it's done great. in the UK. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's doing really great. Like, in Philippines as well, in Australia and everything. Huge. Really, you should be very proud. How does it make you feel that people play these songs at their weddings now? Insane. Yeah.
yeah. actually insane. Like, we're getting so many emails about, like, actual weddings, like, the song being edited into the video and, like, people walking down to the song. And it's it's actually, like, it's actually really wild. Like, I'm very confused. If you can't have love to it, somebody else can. If I can't have love? Yeah, if, 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 if that song is not going to bring love into your life, you're allowing it to bring lo- love into somebody else's. I hate that. <laughs> That's just selfish. <laughs> is it? <laughs> no, it's fine. No, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. People are in f- love. It's great. Good for you. Go get married. But <laughs> I do wonder. Like it must. It must hurt. Like it has to hurt. Yeah, it hurt. Like it hurt. Like I'm definitely like still not over it. I'm still like trying to figure it out. I but it's it's, it's it's you you can tell. Yeah, I thought you were over it. I'm kidding. This is a joke. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I I'm still figuring it out. But like for the most part, like. I can post the song on TikTok without like thinking about it. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. So so, it's, so, it's so good. eleven a.m. She flies out of Vegas. Mm-hmm. Are you able to then write a song about that, or do you have to actually like sit there and be like, "Damn, this just happened"? Yeah, I had to like sit there for like two weeks and be like, "I can't." I don't know why. Like when when specific. I think like usually breakups. Whenever they happen, I can't write it in the moment because I feel too much to be able to just sit down and, like, be calm and write about something. Mm-hmm. But when, like, other stuff... I, I don't know. I don't know how it, how it works usually, but with that one, I had to, like, sit down for, like, two weeks and try to understand, like, oh, well, I'm confused and blah, blah, blah. And then after, like, two, three weeks, I started writing about it. Do you learn from that breakup in that always, relationship? Always. Always learn from every breakup. That's... I'm, I'm better. I, I know what I want more. I know what I don't want. You know what I mean? Like every single relationship I've ever had, like it's it's gotten like better in my head. I get like better with like actually knowing like what I want in a relationship, and I think it's still gonna be like a long journey for yeah. sure. Man, you're st- you're so young. I know. How old are you? Twenty two. Oh my god! What? What? <laughs> you? How lived- old do you think I was? I mean, not twenty two. <laughs> you lived many lives. That's Hell crazy. Man. You're a fetus. You have so much life ahead. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. Yeah. What is this? Don't, you know, latch yourself down. But again, it's good for the music. So maybe you want it. Yeah. So, so did you write a song eventually about the breakup? Yes. Will that see the light of day? Yes. That's the next single. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Before the album. You said you got four songs in total from this girl? Yes. What was the first one? Is a song called, I don't, I, don't, I don't know yet. I need to come up with some weird name, like Chicken Tendies or something to like <laughs> name it. But it's a... Uh, Stop! I'll stop chasing butterflies. This is kind of where it's at. And then the next one was um, go to hell. And then <laughs> third one was so I forgot all the other two, but we wrote like a hefty amount of songs. Most unreleased. All those unreleased. All those unreleased. Yeah. Who is Chicken Tendies about? About my mom. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I'm, that makes me so happy that really your your certifiable biggest song is not about a some girl. fleeting relationship. Yeah, no, it's about my mom. A Gosh. fleeting relationship about my mom. Oh. So it's kind of the. Do you think you we consider that a on and off, wishy washy, not consistent yeah. relationship? Yeah, yeah. By who's is it your fault? Her fault? Her Mutual? fault? Really? Her own thing. Yeah. She's just like, she was a pastor. You know, every day she lived by like, oh, like pray to God and everything, every, like, everything, every worry you have in life and every, every negative thing, just leave on to God and blah, blah, blah. And she got, like, so engulfed in, like, following God that she can't, we can't, I, like, me and my two brothers, like. You can't talk to her. Yeah. No. Is that sad? Make you sad? Yeah, definitely does make me sad, yeah, for sure. Especially when it comes, like, Christmas time. Like, I get so f***ing depressed. It's, like, it's, because it's, like, oh, cool. Well, my mom's off to praying and ch- <laughs> Yeah, she's at church. Yeah, she's doing her own thing, but I'm. I hope she's like you know happy and everything. When's the last time you talked to her? A year and a half ago. Does she know any of this is going on in your life? I think so. Yeah. How do you think she knows? She hears it on the radio. Or yeah. The church tells her. I social media. Of some. Of, I don't really know, but I'm pretty sure she knows because when I signed the Sony, um, she was like, "Congrats, blah blah blah,", blah. but that was like two two and a half years ago. Wow. Yeah. Do you view religion? Like differently today? Do you kind of have resentment towards it, or is it just? No, I don't have resentment towards it. I I still have like a, I still have like a foundation in what I grew up with, which is like born again Christianity, Pentecostal, and everything. But I don't like necessarily practice it. Mm-hmm. Like I don't think I've been to church in like a couple years. 
but I have, you know, I have like, I, I like finished the Bible, the whole Bible three times in my whole life. Like I had to read every single day. She'd wake me up at 7 a.m. and like, read the Bible. Like, oh, cool. Church four times a week. So like, I'm very like. It was ingrained in you. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, there's a lot of Jesus in me. I uh, I grew up similar, but it didn't affect my mom as much. Uh, I went to a Catholic school for many, many moons, so got I went you. to church four yeah. times a week, mm-hmm. and I read the Bible, not three times, but I got through it once. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Reluctantly, to be honest with you, it's, yeah. it's a lot. Yeah. If you didn't know, the Bible's thick. A lot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I was a, an altar boy in the whole the whole thing. Oh, whole wow. Song and dance. Oh, wow. Um, But it's, it, yeah, it, it's... Religion is safety and security, but also it has the ability to engulf you and take you into an entirely new universe that is so detached from the reality that Without everybody shares. Yeah. And, um, yeah, does she know that Chicken Tendies is about her? I don't think so. It's hard not to laugh when the song's called Chicken Tendies. But, I know, it's, but it, it's definitely a joke. <laughs> is Chicken Tendies more for you? Like, there, there has to be some real meaning to that name. Who's, who, whose no. favorite meal is that? No, you just named it that. that was just random. Really? Yeah. Every yeah. Everyone everyone thinks there's like a deeper meaning to it, but really, like I just did like a reaction to it, um, and it like kind of blew up. And I the, the line that said in our kitchen where I cooked your favorite food, chicken tendies. I only said that because I was really hungry and I wanted chicken tendies at the moment. So there was no like planning to it. I just so really. Your mom wanted- never made you chicken tendies growing up. No. No, it's just, it was whatever. And then it kept, I kept doing it and everyone was like, name it chicken tennies. I was like, you know what? Let's do it. So I did. <laughs> and it happened. <laughs> I love the internet. Yeah. Uh, do you think, the song is obviously incredible. Your voice is incredible. Thank do you, you man. think the name chicken tendies kind of got some people interested? Like, what is the. Without a doubt. Yeah. It's definitely been like, wait, what? You want me to listen to a song called chicken tendies? <laughs> You're absurd. And then you listen to it and it's like, Oh wow, this is actually serious. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. There's like some, you know, some sort of seriousness in it. Because you, you deserve the world times two uh, and our simple Sunday afternoon. Are you tapping into actual memories that you shared yeah, with your mom? Some, yeah, we used to after church. We'd you go every every Sunday. We'd go off to some sort of cafe restaurant and like eat all the time, just kind of talk. Do you feel like she deserves the world times two, even though you don't speak today? Yeah, I've like released my like negative emotions towards that relationship for sure. I've like been able to think about it and like. You know, like, you do what you got to do. You know what I mean? I'm here no matter what. And if you want to come back to me and, you know, we can talk, we can talk. But as long as you're happy, then I'm good with it. That's kind of where I'm at in that relationship. That's beautiful. Yeah. Hey, you have a tight relationship with your brothers, your siblings? What do you have? Brother, no. Sister? I have no. two brothers, no. You don't talk to them at all? No. Even though you got them to write a song for you? That was, like, way back. That was, like, five, three, two years ago. What do they? What do we they, don't. We don't. The thing is, I don't have like a close relationship with any of my family. Like everyone's kind of just doing their own thing because that's how we grew up. Like doing their own thing. My mom was doing her own thing. My dad was doing his own thing. Survival. My two brothers. Yeah, exactly. So like, my oldest brother is in London, and then my other brother is in Malaysia, and then you know, mom's in Australia, and dad's in the Philippines, and they're all like scattered, and everyone's just doing their own thing. And you're becoming a global superstar. Yeah, uh, I don't know. No, you are. We'll see what happens. Uh, <laughs> you look like you're gonna vomit. <laughs> I'm already a global superstar because I'm in the Zach Sang show. I mean, that's this is where it's at. This is this is what it takes to make it. This is you, people are gonna ask me, when did you know you made it? I'm gonna say, I was in the f- Zach Sang show, bro. That's when I knew I made it. That's hey. So hey. I'm having a great time. Hopefully, they'll be like, wait, what show? <laughs> what? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, um, so you name a song Chicken Tendies. I'm looking at your YouTube page, and you also have a you're, you're teasing a song called Avo Toast. Yeah, <laughs> is that gonna is that gonna stay that or yeah that's yeah stay that? without a doubt yeah 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 <laughs> why I just, I just just made sense. I just like did a video and said like Avo Toast in one of the part of the songs. And then just everyone started calling Avatos, and now there's a genius lyric page called Avatos with the exact song on it, and like like twenty thousand people have viewed it. Oh, and you can't change it. I can't change it at that point. Now it's like it kind of makes sense. I also have another song called Suns Out, Buns Out. Yes, that's gonna be called that. 
Yeah, it's okay. going to be great. It's going to be really funny. It's going to be a fun time. Is the album done as we sit here talking? Yes, you posted the other day. You yes. said it was done. Yes. But can that change? Like, are you that person who will go in last second and... and yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, it depends, like, what happens in, like, the internet. <laughs> the internet, man. Yeah, the internet, the internet controls me. That's kind of what it is right now. What do you mean the internet controls you? No, the internet doesn't control me. Let me rephrase that. The internet has a big part to what a song to a song's success mm. so you know i am like motivated by because i i like a good amount of my songs you know some are <laughs> for sure without a doubt like I, I, I hate some of the songs i write but like i like a good amount of the songs and um i would want to release it but then if the internet loves it then it's like there's more motivation like put it out got it you know what I mean? That's kind of where I'm at. So you just shoot yourself listening to clips of your own music over and over again, yeah. sharing it on TikTok, hoping yeah. to get a reaction. Yeah. Did, like, are you one of the people who pioneered that technique on TikTok, which everybody does? I, I feel like I, you. Were. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? Like people like sit in their car <laughs> or like sit behind their like their studio desk and they blast their own music and they're like, "This is gonna be the song of the summer. Yeah. I just wrote it." <laughs> and then they're like. Mouth I don't do, I don't do that anymore. That gets like a little too corny. But I st still do sit in my car though. It's a great time. <laughs> the the, 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 I don't know. I don't know why that works. It does work. I don't know why. I'm proud, but it works. I don't know why. I'm confused. It, well, there must be a lot of things that confuse you about TikTok because there's <laughs> things like that that pop up all the time where you're like, why do people like this? Yeah. And then you have to do it. Keep doing it over and over again. Without doubt. To fit the formula. Yep. Do you feel like there's a formula to the music you make? What do you mean? Like, is there, you, you know what will work? You know no, what no, it takes to make a good Clinton Kane song? No, I don't know what will pop off. When the, for chicken, <laughs> for chicken tendies, we had a song, we had a song scheduled for release called All Out Love. Mm. And this song started popping out. And then everyone on my team was like, oh. we're taking this out and we're putting chicken tendies out. And then we just kept, you know, like growing and growing and growing the song and the hype and everything. And then it came out. I guess I'm in love. Same, same thing sun's out buns out was supposed to come out <laughs> and i started teasing it and then and then it, it wasn't like working per se um and then i started teasing avatos and it also wasn't working and then w one day i was just like depressed and i was like you know you know like social media mental health is a problem of course hate yeah. it um but i woke up and i was like i kind of feel like teasing this song in my car so i did it and i was like oh it worked. And then we had like a, like a, the whole team call like two days later and they were like, yep, we're doing this for the next song. You, br you bring up mental health and mental health connected to in specific social media statistics and data that you receive. Yeah, right? like without a doubt. The, the likes, the comments. Yeah. And because TikTok, it can be so extreme <sighs> on both ends. Yep. You can go from having thousands of comments to nothing. To zero. Yeah. And it's, it's almost like they're toying and purposely people's mental health. annoying yeah, it's it, it hurts yeah do you uh, how do you do you you don't know how to manage it obviously because no. it's still as a, <laughs> no. like what is success to you is it still how many people like something on tiktok um it's um success to me it's but like in specific for like a song release yeah would be if multiple videos consistently got like like over uh 1.5 million views consistently so one video with one song does that the second video does that again the third video does that again then it's like okay for sure this is the real deal that's on TikTok. because you, yeah it's on tiktok you can have one video do good and then like a week later you post it again and it won't do anything it's like kind of like really weird how do you categorize how do you define success overall for your music then because it is all connected right like you know something that hits on tiktok yeah. Tends to translate to a Spotify something sometimes. Yeah. With you, I think, more than most. Yeah. Do you think there will ever be a day where you release music and TikTok is not a focus of yours? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I'm trying to get to that point so I don't have to like, think about that. And anymore. be so attached to the music itself. Yeah. Like be attached to the song, not the ebbs and flows of your social media. Exactly. Posts. Exactly. But I'm at a, I, the thing is, like, I understand the game of the music business. Yeah. I've been in this for like two and a half years now. So it's like, I understand like there's so much noise out there. There's so much artists popping out from TikTok. I have to 
get rid of everyone, do my own thing, stop thinking, stop comparing myself to other artists and just make my own lane and do my own thing. You know what I mean? So then I, I understand the business. This is what like, even though like it's kind of, even though it's kind of like, I never thought that I would be releasing music based on the, the response of like, of, of TikTok and blah, blah, blah. I thought like back then I was like, I want to release this music because I want to. Mm. But I see it as like a, I see it as like a stepping stone because then I keep doing this and at some point I can release anything I want to without, listen. without thinking about it. Yeah. And there's going to be people waiting and ready on the other end. Exactly. So that's where I'm trying to be. That's, uh, it's crazy because the music industry changes every few months nowadays. Yep. Without a doubt. It's really confusing. <laughs> What do you say to somebody who listens to your music and goes, ah, oh, he sounds like Louis Capaldi. Great. You'll take it? Yeah. Do you hear that comparison? All the time. Louis Capaldi, James Arthur, Ed Sheeran, James Bay. Those are like the main huh. four. Yeah. Huh. Is that a compliment or uh, yeah, what? without a doubt. I don't take it, I don't take it like, I don't take it negatively because it's like they think I sound like a massive superstar and I'm like, oh, f yeah, great. Because I am. Yeah. You're on the Zach Sang show. I'm on the Zach. Oh, yeah, there <laughs> they've we go. all Thank been on the Zach my... Sang <laughs> show. By yeah. The way, every person you I've mentioned made it, bro. <laughs> yeah, but I think the Lewis Capaldi comparisons come in because, like, you have this amazing voice. You can carry a Thanks, song man. with just your voice, but you're also very funny and kind of like, you know, you're a go you're goofy. You make jokes all the time. Oh, you don't take is that why people seriously. say it? Yeah, because Lewis Capaldi is very funny too. Oh yeah, he's very funny. Yeah. So there you go. You're a good singer and you're funny. Thanks, guys. I do. My ego is all the way up right now. It dude. should be. On the Zach Sang show, plus getting compliments from the Zach Sang people. <laughs> <laughs> Zach Sang people? <laughs> uh, just to mimic that, or just to echo that to a certain degree, like, you're right. Like, dude, your music is so ripped from your reality that I just want to understand you and what you share of yourself matters and you being exactly who you are. Yeah will set you apart from everybody else. Without a doubt, yeah. And to give people like me, a fan, the opportunity to understand who you are, more than just the songs that you put out there, yeah. I think people are going to be invested and they're going to be down to take this journey with you. Yeah. Truly, like who you are will set you apart and it will allow you to pave your own lane yeah. and foster relationships with millions and millions and millions of people that you never thought was possible. Yeah, that's what I had to learn. I think, bef I think like before november last year because like when you become an artist you have this mentality i don't know if for everyone but i see it so sh in social media socially outside and all that stuff like you have when you first start you have this like mentality of especially when you're just starting out even though like you know what i mean when i started out it was the same thing you have this mentality like i'm too cool for school i'm an artist mm -hmm. and like i'm gonna be mysterious and delete all my posts and then change my take out my profile picture and come back and it's going to be a bang. It's like I realized November last year that, that I don't, I'm not that, but that's what I tried to be. Mm. So then as soon as that changed, I'm now I'm like constantly opening up all the time. Like I'm constantly engaging. I'm constantly doing this and I'm kind of just myself, which seems to be working and I'm really happy about, yeah. honestly. It's a lot easier than being something So that much you're not. easier, so much easier. You're one in a million. Well, it won't. You, you haven't confirmed if it's going to be on the album, but is that about somebody that you were in a relationship with, or is it about yourself? <laughs> it was about the. I guess I'm in love. Okay, so about the same girl. Yeah, that was that was that was uh four months off the road. I guess I'm in love. Got it. So you you settle into the fact that you're in love with this person. Yeah. You let it engulf you. Yeah. And you were giddy to the point where you say you're one in a million. Yeah. Do you still believe that she's one in a million? Huh. Tricky answer. Um, yeah, wow. for sure, without a doubt. Beautiful. Yeah, one in a million to you, one in a million to somebody else. Just one in a million. Yeah. What are you thinking there, Daniel? You're trying out rock music. I saw that a rock song. Yeah. What? Everyone started giving me for. They were like, "This is not rock. This is pop." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, okay. I was just doing a fucking TikTok, dude. Like, I just wanted to say that. Okay, don't take everything too literally." But yeah, I, we tried that out, and I thought it sounded pretty cool. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Internet didn't agree. Internet agreed. They did agree. Yeah, they liked it. So, will it see the light of day? Yes, sir. Do you have an, a date for the album? Um, somewhere in the end of November. Got it. 
November. Ooh. Very nice. Yeah. I don't want to watch the world end with someone else. That won't be on the album. No. That was like an in-between single. Yeah, that was like so long ago. I guess I'm in love and Chicken Tennies are going to be on the album. And then... Six, seven more songs? Well, Chicken Tennies is on the album just because it's the biggest song you have, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's like in line with the year. It just kind of made it. sense. It flowed. Yeah. Are you surprised by that song? Or do you understand why it became popular? I'm surprised. I'm confused. I wrote we I, we wrote that song and it was a throwaway. It was like kind of like that was the last day of a writing trip in Big Bear with the, my songwriter and everything. And like I was really hungover when we wrote that. Really hungover. We wrote that in like 20 minutes, so quick. And I was like, ah, this song isn't like okay. This song's good, cool. And we never listened to it. And then one night, I just felt like posting it on TikTok. And then for some reason, people started caring. And I think the song's good. I think the song's great. I just don't understand, like, how, like, it did that still, you know? Yeah. I, <laughs> I just have, like, I don't know. I just have, like, different, like, men I have a different mentality of what I feel like will blow up and will do better. And then, you know, the fans, they know what they want. I don't know. I don't know anymore. It's kind of really confusing. No one knows anything anymore, Zach. Are you writing with the same person? Yeah. Every time? Every time. So you just wake up hungover and you go, I want to talk about this terrible relationship I have with my mom? I, I actually, when we wrote it, I didn't know it was about my mom. So it came out, sub, like it was subconsciously it was very, chilling. Yeah, it was subconsciously. We were, we were just talking, and I, he, he prefaced to me when we, like, we finished the song. He was like, you kept, because we, the plan was we were writing about a relationship, but then he, he kept telling me while we were writing, he was like, why do you keep talking about your mom? And then I, I only found out that it was about my mom when I had the, the master... And I was, I come, I came back home and I was laying in my bathtub. I was having a little, little, little bath, some bath salts, had a little book and some candles. Great, great wow. time. Great time. Um, and then <laughs> alone in the bath al it was, lit. and with music and I started playing chicken tendies and I started crying. Oh. I started like bawling my eyes out when I heard, I hope he treats you better than I ever could. Cause you deserve the world times too. And I said, uh, all that, all that stuff. I started crying and I was like, why the f am I crying? I thought I wrote this about a girl you wrote about your mom who, yeah who is the guy i think he i hope he treats you better than i ever could is that god yeah i hope god treats you better than i ever could because you deserve the world times two on a simple sunday afternoons god, I'm gonna i cry. hope i hope he's home for you even though i had to lose you and you don't know if your mom's ever heard that i don't know don't you want to know there's no part of you that cares i do but like it's like a complicated relationship i i i, I got that <laughs> idea <laughs> so it's like i don't I don't know. I've kind of like I've tried most of my most of my life to like get a response or like appease her and stuff yeah, like you're, that. You, yeah, I, but like nothing's like nothing happens. So it's like it, it comes to a point where I'm like older and I like accept things easier. And I'm like, and that was a song that that like finally made me. I was in that bathtub and I had like like a weight lifted off my chest when I started crying, and I was like, whoa. Wow, okay. Well, mom, I hope you're happy wherever you are. I love you to death, but, and um, that's it. That song changed your life. Is that yeah. fair to say? Yeah. Out of every sure. song you put for out? For sure, for sure. It's crazy. Yeah. It was, it was, I wasn't expecting like the reaction it would have, but. The song that changed your life is about the human being who helped give you life. Yeah. It's freaky. I start crying. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh,. <laughs> This is what it feels like is an EP that's totally worth your time. I listen to the whole thing. It, it's really personal. And, oh, do you like it? Yeah, it's great. Uh, oh, wow. I just I love the fact that like this is what it feels like blank and you went through so many different stages of life and existence. And yeah, you, you, you leave it all out there in the records you put into the world. So I, I got to give you a lot of credit. Yeah. Are you ever afraid to be that honest or but you really don't even know until it's done? Not anymore. At the start, for sure, when I was putting that stuff out, like, I mean, it was daunting, like, telling people on the internet of, like, 36,000 subscribers, which I had at that time, like, I have anxiety. Because I don't, I, don't, I don't really, I don't necessarily think, like, it was talked about a lot before, maybe a little bit, but yeah. it was daunting. And then I, I kept doing it and got to the point where I'm like, I don't really have a problem talk. I'm very, like, honest with what I'm feeling. If I'm, like, depressed, I'll tell you I'm depressed. And, like, I, I'm like, I'll just tell you. Has it always been like that? 
Yeah, I think so. Uh, I've been straightforward, but I haven't. It only started when I started songwriting that I started being honest with my own emotions. I was honest before with like, like with other people and what they would ask me like, oh, so what do you think about what I'm wearing? And I'll be like, you look really weird. I don't know how else to say it. I don't mean it in like a rude way. I mean yeah, it in like, I'm honest. kind of just telling you, you asked me. And some people find it rude. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Honesty is the best policy. Yeah, exactly. And if you're going to ask a question, exactly. expect an answer. Exactly. So, but after songwriting, I, you know, started talking about my emotions more and everything. It's, uh, who's this person that you write with? What is he to you? Like, um, besides the bearer of your emotions. His name's Steve Rush. He's basically my best friend. He has to be. Yeah, he's my best friend. We he 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 was a he was he started off he engineered that whole this is what it feels like album on Spotify. So oh, we wow. we hadn't written yet and then we spent so much time that we'd vibe together so much cuz I'm like a I'm not like a hard per I'm I'm an easy person to get along with, but I definitely like when I when you get into a deeper relationship with me, I'm like a pain in the f-ing ass. <laughs> That's for sure. Um and um I he just we just vibed really, really well. And then we we wrote, we, after we recorded the whole thing, we were like, you want to just try writing? And I was like, and I was still like doing sessions and trying to find like the one person I would write with and someone I hadn't find any, I hadn't found anyone I vibed with yet. And then we wrote one song um, called Leave Myself Behind and it ended up being really good. And we just kept writing. And then I think the third song we ever wrote was Fix It to Break It. Wow. And then the fourth was Hopeless. So then it just kept going and I'm like, oh, so now we're, yeah, literally I, everything everything chicken to every every chicken single thing candies, i guess i'm in love yep hopeless i don't want to watch the world with someone else um fix it to break it uh drown uh is there a part of you that never wants to write a song with anybody but him yeah without a doubt yeah <laughs> for sure yeah it's just kind of it like works. it's kind of easy yeah it just it just works why like fix something that's not broken yeah, and it's safe yeah no, sometimes you got to break it to fix it i don't <laughs> Okay. <laughs> On that That's note. That's true. <laughs> no, I did have one more question. This is your debut album. Would you consider it yes. that? So why in your Instagram caption the other day you said uh, album three is now finished? Mm-hmm. Oh, I just like the <laughs> people. No, but really album three has been finished though. <laughs> so you have three albums done. Yeah, I have like so many songs. <laughs> yeah, but have you taken those songs and broke them down into each album? You know you have enough yeah. songs for three albums. Yes. So that's like 30 to 40 complete songs. Yeah. Could be even more. Could be more. Probably like fifty-ish. But you so you plan on sh- like taking these fifty and making three albums out of them, or no? Everybody says that, and then they write better stuff and they move on. I mean, the, there are some things that I've written that I will always stick to. Mm. You know, like there, for sure, there are songs that I will never get over. There are a lot of songs that I do get over. I'm like that. Like that was so old. I'm like a little better now, so I I don't want to do that. But I don't know. So, so well, in that moment, like you. you I'm better now. I don't want to release that. Are you making music for yourself? Or are you making music for public consumption? Myself. Even if a song is good, but you're past that emotionally, would you still let it come out? What do you mean? Sorry, what, what did you say? You, you you talked about a song that, like, I'm past that. I've grown from yeah. that, whatever. But say the song's great. It yeah. has the potential to be a hit. But you've moved on personally and as your being. Would you still release a song? No, no. Even it could be a huge hit? Probably not, no. And if I don't connect to it, there's no point. But you connected to it at one point in time. And. But you don't today. No, not today. No. Respect. Because I can't, like, I can't be passionate about it. I can't, like, feel it with the words that I say, with everything that I talk about that certain song, if I don't feel it. So then I'm kind of like, if it's a hit, I don't care. I'll, like, you know, maybe I'll write something better. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's just like, I'm not, like, I'm not, I'm not, like, with music, I'm. I obviously I have goals. Obviously, you know I want to do sorts things, sorts things, sorts of things in my head, um, and I have dreams and all that stuff. But like, what's like the actual real thing with me is that I'm like happy with what I am. I'm happy with what I do. I don't care. Um, I, I, I. I'm kind of, there's no like, I'm not like, oh, I want to get bigger, 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 bigger. I'm just kind of like, I'm kind of vibing and I love marketing on TikTok and I love writing songs. So wherever it takes me, I'll go. I'm just happy with what, what I'm doing with my life and I couldn't be happier. 
on, awesome. on that note, Clinton Kane, listen to him. A bunch of links in the description below to listen to, uh, obviously, I guess I'm in love, chicken tendies. It's all down there in the description. Uh, you good? Yeah. The guy's good? Uh, are you good? Are, are, the question is, are you? So good. I'm glad he answered. I'm, good. I'm glad he answered my DM, and I'm glad you came in here. Yes, thank God for your dog's ass, right? Yeah, this, dude. yes. What or what? That's that's the that was like the main thing. That really that brought you here. That brought me here. Nothing else would have. Do people often tell you that you're like funny and entertaining? God, what kind of what, what kind maybe of question a couple is that? people? Because yeah. you know we've had a lot of people on this show, and like, you know, not everyone's funny, but you're funny. Like you can talk about serious things, but also kind of throw a joke in there. Which is cool. So I just know people often told you that you were funny. Yeah, some yeah, some people. Okay. I did like a bunch of college shows, and they were like, I didn't really, I didn't really like take it into heart. I don't, I don't really think about it so much. But they were like, was this a, was this a sh- music show or was it a com- comedy show? <laughs> I just like to, I just like to overshare and talk about like <laughs> stupid <laughs> all the f- time. I don't know, but I, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, no problem. It's all trauma, dude. <laughs> I was gonna say. Joke about my- Trauma. That's literally all the jokes I have. People call it funny, but I call it abuse. <laughs> like I call it years of torture. Laughter the pain. Right? And just yeah. looking for somebody to listen. Exactly. You but real talk. I, I you're an incredible artist and uh Thanks, man. as of this moment I could dub you a quality human being. Um yeah. but genuinely just keep being yourself because I think you're yeah, I think you're gonna be a superstar. So uh, Thanks, guys. Clinton. This is so sweet. I'm blushing right now. I'm excited exactly. for you to come back. I'm blushing. I know. I'm going to come back for sure. You want me tomorrow? <laughs> I'll be here. I, you got to go back to Vegas. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Because <laughs> you and your, a lot of entertainment up there in yeah. Vegas. Huge hub <laughs> for those, those dancers and stuff and the magicians and the yeah. lions. Uh, Clinton Kane, everybody. Woo. Thank amazing. you so much for having me, guys. Anytime. Hey, beautiful human, thanks for watching our full interview, but I get it. Like, a full interview is a lot, so we got a Clips channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore, so we just gave you the highlights. Please, subscribe, and uh, notifications, and all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.